the forge has gone quiet, the bellows blow no more. The forge has gone quiet, the smiths have gone home. Only fading embers remain, and my hearth grows cold. One kiss from you to rekindle it all. Hey, welcome back to Queen of Embers. We're back on episode 36, where we last left off. The ship was slightly tilted to the side. You had dropped anchor to ensure it didn't tip over. Uh-huh. Hopefully that offset. The oxen had been drawn away, and the wagon's kind of slipping. It's nighttime, and you're about to ignite one of the uh, one of the barrels of the Revaldequin, not a puckle gun, as I mistakenly called it before. Okay. So... Here's what we're going to do. Warren grabs Agnes by the horn. (laughs) You take a torch and drop it over the first fuse. They're a medium distance to you? Yeah, if they're at 60-something. Yeah. If they're more than 45 feet away. Because it's just uh, fellowship yards. Or or something bonus times five. Or nine, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So it's going to be a hard test because it's nighttime, uh, and you kind of are aiming out there in a medium distance. Along with this roll, I want you to add one d6 fury die. Mm. If it lands on six, Mm -hmm. something bad happens to the Madeline. The Madeline. If you critically fail the test, something bad happens on top of the deck of the Madeline. All right. So hard, is it was it warfare? Hard warfare, yes. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's gonna be a nineteen then. Ooh. Yikes. And that is an 08. Oh my god! <laughs> and you're shooting not at them but near them. And yeah, I was shooting in front of them. Yes. Okay. Boom! You hear this explosion as it fires out this like. <laughs> this rain of flame kind of fires out and just sets this field <laughs> ablaze. It's a, bur- it's, a, it's a burst radius. Nice. So it's a yes. <laughs> the whole field is <laughs> begins burning. The ship <laughs> kind of heaves with the shot as you kind of feel your feet kind of give out from underneath of you. You don't fall over, fortunately, and the whole thing seems to kind of. <laughs> roll back until like it's great weight kind of causes it to slowly teeter forward and back until it falls back into place. You kind of get your spyglass out there and you're looking at toward the, the fire in the middle of the field. You should be able to see them easier now. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. And you can see they begin to quickly scatter. Very, very quickly in fact. They kind of take back to the hills and the sounds of the barking dogs kind of die down. As you have clearly chased away the menace of the mountain folk with their dogs uh, that were attempting to beset themselves upon the uh, <laughs> upon the uh, settlement of Hastings. Darren is just staring at uh, Warren, going, <laughs> <laughs> you can, "Yes, you can yes! only you can only imagine, you can only imagine uh, what the people inside the Raven's Loft are thinking right now." I want to yell out in folk because I actually know uh-huh. folk, uh-huh. like. Uh, come back again, and you will m- face the wrath of Madeline, Queen of Durindal. <laughs> I'll say that in folk, so I don't know if any of you have folk. They no. all speak folk. I do. <laughs> you do? Mm-hmm. Boom! Nope. Well, nobody is going to approach. The mountain folk certainly aren't going to. And you don't imagine that anybody from the inn is going to either, because they have no idea what's happened at this point. They can only, they're kind of left to their own uh, guesses what has happened. But uh, as the explosion happens, the oxen will be bucking and rearing and pulling and running in all directions. As uh, you will need to attempt an assisted uh, handle animal test, this test will be challenging, to keep them under control. Uh, 
This you'll need to measure degrees of success or failure. Okay. For degrees of failure, you lose that many oxen. Mm. They're gone. This is so if you fail, measure degrees of failure. Okay, so okay. this is a hard, uh, challenging test, you said? Mm -hmm. okay, a 36% chance to succeed. I know. And that's a failure, but I'm going to reroll. Okay. So I'll take reroll as it, be sure to clarify when you reroll re using, using a fortune point. Okay, I get a misfortune. Nope, still failed. What's your degrees of failure? Uh, let's see here. I rolled a fifty your units and your fellowship bonus. Uh, so I rolled a fifty-seven, so that's a seven. And my fellowship bonus is a four, so that's eleven. Uh, Suddenly, the oxen begin to bolt in all directions as Hrung and and um, excuse me and Warner are trying to chase after them. They manage to corral, uh, not um, corral. The score is ten. Is that right or twelve? Twenty. 20. They manage to corral several, but almost a third of the oxen that have come have bolted off into the distance and are running kind of through the fields, through the grass, avoiding the fire, obviously. But they're going to be gone to the night. You're not going to be able to stop them. They're simply gone. Current's going to uh, kind of wander towards the direction of the field that's on fire and mm -hmm. get within a safe distance, but awfully close to it and stare at it for a while. Fire. <laughs> Flames. <laughs> Fire. You can see Warren's rough shape in the flames as he's standing before this low bonfire that's burning. At first he was looking to where the mountain folk had retreated to. Now he was simply standing in front of the flame. They all skedaddle? As I look at oh, Bannister. They're gone. They're yeah. gone. All right. That was a good shot. Well, <clears throat> glad I scared the piss out of them. Hopefully that gives, makes them uh, think for a night or two. And we'll be long gone. But looks like we lost a few. Better than all of them, though. Oh, the oxen. Right. Eleven. Run, please. Wolfgang sighs, but also understands it was a sacrifice worth making. I'll look at, uh, is, it, is that, are we going to have enough? We don't write them off right, right just yet. You know, we can look warm in the morning. They're gone. Damn oxen are probably gone. They may be wandering, a few may be wandering out in the hills. Uh, Wolfgang says he tugged at his beard. Once, once the first light comes up, we'll just get up the spyglass, take a look around. Yeah. Well, rustle them up. They know where their food comes from, unless they go scaring them for others. They might come back. Who knows? They ain't coming back anytime soon, and I ain't chasing them in the night. Learned that lesson already once. Uh, I'm not disagreeing with you, but I'm going to say that's not right them off quite yet. I need them. Well... What's the plan, Captains? We should stay with the ship. Alright. I'll sleep up here. I don't think that's safe, Sammy says. She's Lena Moore. I think we need to get down off this, this thing till we can assess tomorrow. Something didn't sound right. Something popped and cracked when you shot that damn thing. Something infernal rumbling inside the belly of this ship. He looks toward the hall. Alright. Uh, it is to be expected, expected, I suppose. A big gun like that. Well, I mean, we could have fought him to the man, but I think this is probably the best answer. You got the right of it. Night will turn today. Well, right. It is not a uh, restless night by any means, but you do manage to keep watch and 
walk toward the fields. The fire has burnt out. By that morning when the fogs come and the, the, the cold autumn morning kind of greets you as you awaken, a bit frigid around the fire that, is, uh, that has uh, been spent by the, the wee hours of the night. Um, you'd have to make water and kind of assess what's happened. You see there's a big scorch mark in the middle of one of the fields. The fire, the flame did not spread, fortunately, because it rained. It's been raining for quite some time, obviously. So that's been a godsend. People begin to gather that early that morning once the sun, once dawn breaks in the east. And dawn comes quickly. Much quicker than the, than the night comes. Or I should say, as quick as the night comes. As quick as the night comes, right. Is there any... Corpses? Any anyone actually got hit by the fire? No. Any uh, people that show up, I'm gonna let them know that I'll give them one uh, silver shilling for if they can bring an oxen in. <laughs> Offer a bounty up. Mm-hmm. Okay. Real charm test. Can I assist? Up on that. Same. But what way will you assist? Uh, two. Either of you may, but in what Ooh. way will you assist? I will. I, I'm help a charming find, fellow. I was gonna say I'd help him find more people. And... So, yeah. from a role play perspective, what? How do you? How do you? How do you? How do you want to assist in your case, Banneker? Well, I'll let her go first since she's already there. So, I mean, if that makes sense, her logic is. Yeah. So yeah. when he starts to ask people, she would go, "Oh, that's a good idea. Start to look for more people because more numbers." Okay. It'll be a standard test, but you can assist. Okay. Alright, so that's going to be a 36% chance to succeed. And I did not succeed. Mm. It's kind of a look of discomfort. I don't think I'll be chasing after no oxen. I don't think stumps on me. Have you ever. No oxen around here, no animal handlers. I'm just letting you know. Good money for you. I'm not going to get killed for a shilling, but at some point or another in the mo- in the in the morning, as you're kind of trying to assess what's happened that night, Banneker, you're the one who actually is the first one who spies them. They're a group of priests, a group of monks, walking down the road toward the night line. You can see them in the spyglass. Oh, well, so I think your prop is coming. Oh. Yep. Thank you. Hey, Warren, you want to take the horses out and try and uh, wrestle up a couple of those oxen? I can help with that. Anyone, anyone, you join as well? Anyone? Yeah. yeah, yeah last I'm, I'm, I'm useless with, with churchmen and captains, I guess. Anyone who wants to help can come along, too. I'll, I'll definitely help. I got a lasso. Mm-hmm. The three of you saddle up and head out toward the fields to track down some of these oxen, see how many you can wrestle up. Meanwhile, the... Uh, this group of clerics, priests, monks, or you may deem them, begin to approach uh, the Madeline. And at this point, Wolfgang is attending to whatever else he's doing, and so is Sammy. Sammy is seeing to the damage. They stop their work and begin to approach as the monks approach. Good morning. Light be upon you, one uh, of the men says in the front. Yeah, you too. <laughs> yeah, you too, buddy. You too, bruh. <laughs> you too. You too, Back at bruh. You. <laughs> Life be upon you. Thanks, bro. Travelers, <laughs> welcome to Hastings. It seems that you've done a great deed here that in the in the evening. You've drove drove away the mountain folk and their dogs. Yeah, it was kind of fun. I mean, yes, it was uh, <laughs> uh, something we were willing to do both for the town and for the, the good of our livestock. I don't think we've been formally introduced. I am Father Brother Proctor Roland. Uh, well, I'm not very formal, but uh, name's, <laughs> <laughs> name's Terwin Forrester. He smiles. He'll shake your hand. Uh, he has the hands of a, of, a, of a farmer. The hands of a laborer. Uh, Calloused. As, as I get a good, strong grip and all that. Uh, His face is chapped. Uh, it's tanned and Cracked from working in the fields, you would guess. Well, uh, not the most hygienic of men, but uh, clearly uh, not only a priest but a workman. Uh, sorry about that, but uh, I figure you know it's better that than people. Tis no matter. I'm certain that you have knowing that it had rained for the last 
few nights, you would assume the fire would not spread. Yeah. <laughs> yup. <laughs> yup. <laughs> Let me get a good look at the rest of your lot. I see some of the others went to go chase after the oxen. Mm. We found one out back. Out back from the chapel. We did, huh? Eh? We corralled it, at least. Oh, that's good. Uh... The buzzing of horse flies around here and the smell of manure is pretty strong. <laughs> Having this many oxen camped in one in one place, and uh, of course the horse flies that gather, and just this whole place smells like a sty near the foot of the Madeline. But he doesn't seem to matter. He doesn't seem to care. Perhaps you don't care. No, uh, Terwin cares. He's not good fertilizer. He's not a farmer or anything <laughs> like that. Uh, he uh, he goes. At some point, if appropriate, he'll go to where the fire was and he'll take some of the ash and put it on his hands and, like, you know, it's somewhere, like, on his clothing so that he smells it instead of the, yeah. uh, <laughs> I don't think we've been formally introduced. He smiles as he looks toward Alster and Lisa. I am Roland, he introduces himself as. A friend. Oh, uh. Lisa's going to assess that statement. <laughs> He's smiling, beaming widely. He seems an earnest man. We to scrutinize the test. This test is secret. <laughs> scrutiny. scrutiny. I have a 62 in scrutiny. <laughs> and I rolled a 37? Keep it. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty bad. I don't think I'm gonna do anything. Here's my name's Salisa. You all look very tired, he says. Quite the night. Hard to sleep with uh, the smell of smoke in your nose. I can only imagine. I'm sorry about that. I'm sorry that people did not tell you. It seems that uh, they were quite reticent to say anything about it. Is that normal? People hasting are a bit wary of people from the east. Understandably, but when it's something that could possibly kill someone, you, you think they'd be a little bit more um, forthcoming, I suppose. I feel that the complexities of the court are often lost upon the simple-minded. Life and death doesn't seem complex in that state, but I You suppose. represent the Baroness, no? Yes. The people of Hastings do not trust the Baroness. He admits plainly. Smiling the entire time. Hmm. <laughs> That's right. Panic and Roland are like this. <laughs> we'll assume you all have returned at this point with a few <laughs> red. You managed like to that. roll a roll a D6 Fury die and add one, and that's how many oxen you managed to recover. Now, right? Awesome. Come on, man. Big money. Big money. Two. Two. So oh, we got three. three. Right. No, it was a one. So you got the people of two. The people you, ha you happened upon this as this, ha as this occurs. The people of Hastings do not trust the Baroness. He oh. smiles, beaming. Um, it is the plain lot. truth. Lovely to know that my life rests on that. But, uh... Why would you fear for your life? You have nothing to fear here. Mm. Mistrust does not necessarily mean one means ill intent. Oh, yeah, if that were the case, I'd kill everyone. <laughs> well, the mountain men, I think, uh, would have been a would have, would have been nice to know about. A slightly so useful warning, yeah. But uh, as for the Baroness, I I agree. There is trouble in the east and the west. What's the trouble in the west? Will around the long to die. Oh no. Leaving his sons to squabble over the stead wall. That's why the mountain men are attacking. He smiles. Unfortunately, I do believe the folk of the mountains do value the life of people. But I feel that they have been of there's some sort of a frontage or something, some affordance that they had demand has been let to them, and now there's some petty squabble and has spilled forth into the valleys, and we have unfortunately been, 
Well, we have been made uh, a part of this cruel game of these cattle raids between the two clans. Mm. Mm. Well, I'm glad we could help at least last night. They have never drawn weapons on people here. They've simply been stealing the cattle. Uh, knowing Lord Randall, sons, and knowing the minds of the folk as mirthful as they are, he says, I feel that this is some sort of game to them. Whoever can gather enough cattle can rule this or that steading in the mountain. Uh, <laughs> you're saying we went a, a bit overboard. <laughs> no, no, I think you're saying that this is a contest between the brothers to see who can rule. Uh, Whoever steals the most wins the crown. There's no becomes bodies. the new law. Oh, there's no bodies in the ashes. That is fortunate. Loss of life is a... It's terrible. Well, back where I'm from, if you steal a man's livestock, your life is forfeit. So... The folk have a very different, um... Different cultural upbringing, I suppose. So I guess what you're getting at is it may not be the best idea to try to be going through them stud walls right now. Well, you're heading to the west, he says. I was led to believe that you didn't, you weren't going west. I'm just meant for anyone. No. I mean, if there are basically war, civil war with themselves, I wouldn't want to go anywhere near that. Yeah. You know how brothers fight. Captain, well, a I mean, fist I... fight or two, a bloody nose, a black eye. I do not think that Lord Randall's sons would intentionally try to kill one another. I feel that this is frank, as brothers and sisters are ought to do, they are squabbling. We have heard no word of any killings in the mountains. Alright, well that's, that's good then. I know the folk may be simple and have different gods, but I think that they are like us in the way that Elor lights our way and teaches the sanctity of life in the same way that they're pagan gods would teach them that all lives are valuable. But brothers and sisters do so. Well. Do I trust his words? Does he seem... He seems honest enough. That thing's really kind of like, at this point with your scrutinized test, which I can't tell you if it's success or not, right. also it's success or failure, failure, but you're not really picking up any signs that he's trying to be evasive. In fact, he's very plain spoken. Well, we need a few supplies so we can get on our way and get out of your your hair and let you get back to your business. Well, we'd be more than happy to host you here in Hastings. Without a doubt, you've done us a great honor. Oh. Because also, they need some timbers. It's listing a bit. As long as Captain's okay with it. Right, Captain's going to have that list. This is home, yes? Yep. Take it accounts, Wolfgang says. Sammy and him are looking over the uh, entirety of the night a lot, leaving a lot of you to diplomat. Yeah, and play Cap diplomat. Captain also knows where we're going. But, uh, so west, he says. Unless you're going to the Maw. I don't even know what that is, so I can't tell you that. The captain is the captain of the ship, as he likes to tell us. But, uh, well, I wouldn't go to the mall. <laughs> no. The people in the mall do not have a particular affection for the Baroness either, but their disagreements are a little more visceral. Let me tell you, ask, what, uh, what is the grievance with the Baroness here? Uh, well, oh, here, I don't know. Yes, but here, here in Hastings. I, I am not from her stars and skies or whatever. I'm not from Pacific. Well, I suppose it's a long story, but he will kind of begin to kind of set the story up, and he goes on to explain that I knew Baron Cassander Malister from Old Lork, and I served at his side as his counsel. Over time, I was awarded these lands when Hastings was under duress by a and a group of anarchists, and was held by a ruthless man whose uh, name literally escapes Arcade. me. What's that? Yes, right. A ruthless 
man who was called the Red Knight, Stanton R.K. <clears throat> it was Cassander Malister who freed Hastings along with Lyndon Genevieve the Lesser, the Baron of the Maw. You see, that's why they they wouldn't be too friendly with uh, Baroness right now, because that's where the Genevieve's uh, first struck uh, uh, Salt Peter. There are uh, deep grievances, suffice it to say, with the people here in the Baroness. We are caught in the middle of it, but know that we serve the one and true Baron of the Rovain Girdle, Baron Genevieve, the Lesser. Here, here. Lesser. <laughs> He's always been. Because of his father's junior. I thought I was the younger. Oh, yeah, maybe it's the younger. younger yeah, sorry. I kind of like the lesser. I kept thinking the lesser, but it's the younger. It's right. Yeah, you're right. Tomato, tomato. How much do you like him? Your nickname's not uh, not the most flattering. Lord Brand the Dickless. My yeah. brother has no penis. <laughs> this penis doesn't work. This penis doesn't work. So yeah. Brand the broken. broken. Listen, I like Thanks, Tyrion. Yeah. <laughs> I like. I like. I like. I like the champion passenger well enough. It is not that the people of Hastings have disdain for the Baroness. They simply do not care for the courtly going-ons of Durendal. And since the passing of the Duke Daunton Thorn of 15 years ago, he goes on to explain this very complicated political relationship. And he try he realizes he's not getting very far, so he kind of like kind of begins to walk it back and simply says. The people of Hastings do not have any love for the Baroness. Well, uh, understandably, but uh, obviously they thought there was some kind of threat. They bar in an inn and tell us we're not allowed to come back while the dogs are out. And, uh... Yes, if don't there tell are us wolves what... at your door, you yeah. do not leave the door open. Once again, you stated that you do not think anyone's life is at stake. But the people here think very differently. And chose not to Oh, you you mistake the 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 level of competence of some of these people. They're simple farm folk. They are not uh, well read. Mm. We have led them in the liturgy, in the light of the learner, but they are not read. Proctor is fine. We saved our, our chattel and Most of them. the yep. whatever this thing is is still here. So, well, they didn't want no to harm, say. no foul, as they say in the South. <laughs> I must say, this is a strange thing to bring from the East. Might I inquire for what purpose you intend to bear this thing upon cattle through the mountains? It seems preposterous. Again, the captain has all the answers. From my understanding, it's some sort of gift to some sort of person. A gift? Hey, hey Hopper, don't ask, don't ask me. We should have words sometime. I would not know what purpose such a thing would serve. Well, having been around ship, the decorative. It seems... The ship on land. Some... Precisely. <laughs> so, someone will. An absurdity. Someone, some, someone will like it. I'm sure. I, I don't know why. But. I think it symbolizes the lengths that uh, Her Grace Dupre would go to in order to uh, see things done. As some would say, they would try to move mountains. Well, she's moving a ship on land. Uh, yes. It, it goes to, uh, I think, oh. towards intentions. <clears throat> How eloquent of you to represent her. I see. So yeah. that that's just my that's just my humble humble uh, thoughts. Glad I mean, to know you're. I, I'm no poet. Um, I mean, I wouldn't be able to write any stories. No, no, I I understand. I I I do not mean to pry. I just thought it a curious oddity. I mean. Idiocy, oddity. Yes. Um. Look, we and <laughs> we and Hastings have heard about the rumblings of some 
fireborn prophet. Ah. Ah, yes. Mm. In in the east, and we have see and people have left Hastings for these stories to see this this person who rose from the dead rose from the ashes. The prophet. The soup stained the prophet, soup I think they call it. Soup of name. <laughs> We're spreading that name here. Soup stained prophet. There was a a traveler who came through it must have been a year or so ago. <laughs> he was a I don't know, an influencer of sort, a minor <laughs> diplomat. And he was in the Raven's loft and he found himself here over winter. He was essentially left here during a snowstorm. So he spent some time talking to the people and uh, told these stories about something falling from the sky over this foundry and these workers like being killed and someone had survived and was born again from flame. His stories at first seemed absurd, but they were told in such detail and with such great color it seemed as if perhaps he knew this prophet who arose again. When the snow is lifted, the diplomat did not head west, but instead he took people with him east. People who wanted to see this miracle. Hmm. Suffice to say, they did not return. I was going to ask, but he answered right there. Well then. Well, Durandal is a big city. There's a lot of reasons to stay. Yes. I suppose there is. Nice. Well, they have left the light of the lantern. Perhaps they will find their way back here someday. And if not, they will stand in judgment before his throne. Before he stands before the custodian. Well, do they not have temples of learning? I'm, I'm more of a custodian myself. Well, I suppose that one could say any time when one reads a book, you are standing before a temple of the learner. All right. You are bathing in his light and his glory, the knowledge that he would give. I'll give human time. <laughs> Tear one of the little nudge. As for <laughs> chapels, no, that's very unseemly. All right. Huh? Stories. Stories, right? The learner. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's the one that puts them all in your head in the first place. Well, <laughs> stories are stories, but. Truth is a different matter. Well, as you say, I do not mean to bore you with, uh, <laughs> with, with the such things. I know this is this is not the reason why you came here. He, tra- he changes the topic very quickly. <laughs> You'll forgive me. To be. We were hoping that maybe we could uh, use some of those tenders, you know, point out some of the timber to expand the road up there to get through, since it's been washed out. I am certain that the uh, that the the people of Hastings will will be willing to make trade with you. I mean, you have done a great service for them. Yes, it's only a matter of time until that word spreads. And what, word doesn't spread very quickly in Hastings, particularly when <laughs> such a marvel <laughs> arrives at our doorstep. I'm pretty sure the sound spread pretty pretty loud last night, also. Uh, I was awoken from my rest. <laughs> but I am I am a deep sleeper, but even I was awoken from my rest. Well, imagine being the one that fired it. I couldn't hear for a good three seconds, at least. It was a glorious sound. It really was. Wish you would have been away for the star. Did. In the Librum, uh, there is a book that speaks the last cataclysm, and they speak of trumpets numbering nine that will blare when the, when the skies will turn red with flame. And the pale, hor- the pale arrival will ar- arrive on the horizon. Huh. Um, I am certain you, have, you, you, you certainly have inspired the uh, fear of God uh, into the mountain folk, without a doubt. All right. Well, I'm glad uh, I succeeded. Then the last cataclysm already happened. <laughs> I suppose. Too bad I don't have any instruments then. Well, them sure look like trumpets to me. They're sure spitting fire. Hmm. That ain't nothing like it. Darren uh, visibly gets uncomfortable and defensive uh, when comparing a simple weapon to the last cataclysm. Well, so, 
Is there anything that I, Roland, can do for you while you stay here in Hastings? I think it would be just uh, make the people understand that we are going to move through, but we, we, we need assistance getting this thing moving again. Well, any introductions you could make, I think, would be helpful. Malifs, nails. I'm certain that people will, tra- will make trade with you. Being Dufresne, he says very clearly. Yes. Yes. Oh, a message has arrived for you, by the way. <laughs> has it? Probably. I trust that you are the Dufresne, yes? I'll show him my badge. Same. I will take that as a badge of your office, he says, right. ignorant, perhaps, of what it means. It says it on there. You can read it. It does not say that. <laughs> it's just a badge. It's a symbol oh, of the okay. office. Oh, right. okay. It's a like Dufresne agency. Like... It has your last name like that. It says right. FBI right here. <laughs> <laughs> I have papers. You do have the writ. Says it in Sharpie across yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah, indeed. All right. Uh, might I inquire as to where this message sounded to? Let's speak in private back to the chapel. I'll figure that. Yes. I will accompany you if you are returning, then. Certainly, I would welcome you. You all are welcome. All right, let's go. Captain, do you have your list for us to help the Joe? Or? I do. I am rather fearful, though, that we have caused perhaps some irreparable damage. You see here, he shows you the... the, the that's what they call it, the... the the, the mass that kind of goes underneath the boat. Wow. The, where, where that lumber is called. That kind of where everything, that the, sp- yeah. the spine or the, of everything kind of comes out. This here, he said in nautical terms. But what is split? We will need tar. We will need rope. We will need nails. I've made a list. We'll need a few days for repairs. Mm-hmm. Well, we do what we need. Wonder if there's a green grocery. Well, yeah, I mean, we can ask about town who would have these supplies, right? Regardless, we'll need to stay here for a bit. Okay, in bits. Well, good that we have done. We have set ourselves back a few days. Well, can't say as I have ever repaired a boat, but. I reckon I can lend you a hand at that. Well, Sammy says, you grab a bucket full of tar, you heat it up on the fire, you fill in the cracks, it's the best you can do. Mm-hmm. He smiles. We'll figure it out. Clap you on the back hard. Yeah. All right, then. Will we, uh... To my chambers. Yes. He'll walk and make small talk with you, you or about the fields. Elisa's glancing around the whole time. Mm-hmm. Looking at every corner. Suspicious as you are, not being surrounded by others, like you start to kind of feel a little more calm. And particularly as you get into the small chapel that he is in, there is a um, sense of comfort. So it's not as creepy as the Abbey? No. Okay. Well, he says, as he takes a seat behind his desk, he opens a drawer and he procures this long piece of paper. A message has come for the Dufresne, direct from Steed's Hill. It's clear he's already read the message. He places it up on the, up on the, um, up on the table. Was it sealed? Like, was there a wax seal that's been broken? It's already been opened. He opened it. Okay. Now that we're in private, he says, I would like to have a conversation with you. You know, and I know, that the Baroness is intending something. And I feel that this message here is confirmation of 
some of the things that we have heard. <clears throat> well, may I read my letter? Yes, since you obviously have. We will get to that. He smiles. <laughs> You're going to kill Tyrion, yes? Boss. We ain't saying shit till we see that letter. There's no mean to need to. There's no meaning. There's no need to fucking read someone else's letters. Hmm. Quite I funny. Mean. We pulled the badges, but it seems you haven't. At what point did you join the Defray? I'm curious. Every raven that passes into Hastings comes here. To our aviary. No messenger arrived. No letter was brought by postmaster or writer. It came by Raven. Let me assure you, as a leal servant of the church, a believer in the Holy Father, God's rest his soul, and a servant, a humble servant of Elorum, that your secrets are safe with me. Well, that's, that's fine. Let us assure you we are still kingsmen. So we need our letters so we can figure out exactly what our posts are supposed to be. Yeah. I but have if you been. ask us questions, let us first see what we're being told to do. You see, we're the type that follows orders. And if we don't know what them orders are, then we can't necessarily say what we're going to do. And also, if we are to trust you with our secrets, as you put it, then maybe we should know our own secrets. Read as you wish. <clears throat> you pull a piece of paper. Yeah. It's encoded. Just, Clearly encoded. I, well, Lisa, for one, has secret signs, yeah. and for two, I'm sure she yeah. knows the you're codex. Gonna, you look toward um, Roland, and you're surprised, and then you're a knight. Well, maybe perhaps you're not surprised the Alora yeah. would understand yeah. how to de scramble <laughs> any sort of letter from uh, from <laughs> from Steed's Hill. Dirty sense. She is there like a, a little desk or a table over the side that she can possibly put down and work with her codex. Uh, yeah, I mean you're you could fairly quickly you have a, you have a decoder, decoder ring. Decoder ring. <laughs> <laughs> <Do you> have, <laughs> <you> think, <laughs> I'm not wearing this spinner no. ring. There's li- it's literally it's called a decoder ring. It's on a piece of paper, mm-hmm. and it's essentially kind of a spinning. Yeah. Like two pieces of paper that spin together that reveal certain letters. Yeah, and that's she said. Yeah. Drink and more does it over tea. Yeah, yeah. Like a, a simple Turing machine could have brought into a box. Yeah. So you quickly decode it, and it says, "See to the succession." Steve Hill wants us to drink more oval tea, right? <laughs> drink more oval tea. Yeah, I'm sorry, I missed. Don't that. drink the yellow snow. <laughs> Wait, what Can, did we, uh, Christmas is there story. anything that, um, a, a symbol, uh, a stamp, anything that proves this is obviously from my It's encoded text. as such. Okay. Somebody have to go to grave. If you'd be sur- So there would be no question in her mind that this came from Steve. That's Hill. right. That's right. But in, in short, it says, even though it's not the entire letter, it says, it basically implies seed of the secession. She drops the letter for a second. Now you understand. I don't understand. What is it you want? Why don't we just get to the point? Yeah. Yes, Kaltarian, that monster of a stupid thing is a gift. Uh, that idiot and his crew are who we're supposed to uh, escort. Did you tell them? Oh, I thought. No, but she would. Uh, when he says that, she would say. At least she would read off what it says, but. And see to this, this session. Kingsman. Nay. I guess we're not Kingsman anymore. Which one did that come from? Steve's Hill. So. Alexi or. Alexi wouldn't be a Steve's Hill. You don't know. I, Take care of There's no underlying. signature. I, oh, okay. I, obviously from the agency. Uh, no one else will. No one else should. Know our codex. She looks at Proctor for a second and then glances back over at everyone else. We alone answer practice in many languages. I'm quite aware. But this is obviously from the agency. Chain of command. From the agency, who are King's men? Telling us to go forward with it. So we we have to? Uh, there are. 
there are possibilities as to why they wish us to continue with this, which would be that there's obvious ramifications and things that are happening other than... Yeah, things that are beyond us. Right. Do you ever feel like your chess piece is being pushed across a board? Oh, we're definitely in the pond. Oh, yes, every day. We know that. Yeah, it's what we signed up for, it's what we get paid for. We're not quite stupid enough to believe that we have a hand that moves it. Come on now. You think that you're useless in this situation? No, 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 no. I'm used, quite useful. Used, used to it. We're quite used to it. Yes. Yes, sometimes his drawl, uh, his Romanian drawl is hard to... Yeah. It doesn't necessarily mean that a pawn can't take out more power of peace. True, true, true. They just more limited in their capacity to do so. I see. Well, you should probably know this, and we are in private company. I will share some information with you you may be interested in knowing. There are things afoot in your fair town of Durindal that are guiding things. Things is such a vague word. Mm. Let's speak our truths here. You know our truth, obviously, mm. now. Yo. There's a group of merchants. Five true. Uh, the one, perhaps, foremost of them, a man named Bruno Lehman. Mm-hmm. Who has orchestrated things to see this come to fruition. To see that the Baroness pushes forward with this. You must understand that you are not the first people to pass back and forth between Hastings. And Ooh. certainly, and, but you are certainly the first to pass through Hastings of such an obvious uh, uh, gift intended for the West. It's were I to read this situation, it would be that the Baroness wants people to know that this is happening. <clears throat> yes. Yeah, this is the gleaming torch of approach. Mm-hmm. This is the, I am so prepared, I don't have to keep the secret approach. Why would she? Why would she? No, why would she? At this point, she has amassed enough influence and power. She's the sun and the stars, correct? She is. <laughs> And the moon. I don't give two shits about celestial bodies, if I'm going to be honest. <laughs> I know you do. I don't. So yours is purely terrestrial. I reside here, not there. Yeah. I tell you what. You need information. Of course. Yeah. Clearly, we'll be passing back through here at some point. One would hope. Tell me what you learned in Kiltiria. Maybe, maybe we can speak more about secrets. Maybe we can talk more about some of the players back in Durindal. The person that could expose, at least to show a bit of my hand, <coughs> Bruno Lehman. He is part of a shadow group of merchants called the Guiding Hand. They are orchestrators of a sort. In Durendal. Bruno? Bruno Lehman. Lehman. Okay. Okay. I assume this guiding head, since they're merchants, merchants profit quite a bit off of war, and that's the particular push? Or is it something else? Maybe you can bring me something back from Kelterian and we can speak further about this. So is it? I'm quite tired of fetch quests. I don't know about the rest of you. Oh, I'm not ordering you to fetch anything. I'm asking you to stop opposite. being pawns and take command of your situation. You are clearly not being sent only on a protection mission. Come on. We are not fools. No. No. We, we are just... in private company, and there's a reason why I'm meeting with you like this. Well, obviously the Baroness wants to show that not only does she send this... whatever the thing is, but she also... Can send to us. That's two power strokes at once. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's you send a divine, that means you've got some power. Of course. So this uh, Bruno, is he. 
has he given any reasons or demands? We can speak more when you return uh, yeah, from Kaltiria. Yeah, that's right. Well, I guess we'll have to wait. To I would out. inquire about him, though. Huh? I would inquire about him in Kaltiria. Yeah. You will find that the merchants in Durindal have far-reaching power beyond just the city walls. We'll interests in Kaltiria, interests in the West. Money we'll moves everything. All the big deal. We'll see if we can figure out Bruno Lehman's terms. Right then. The guiding hand. And what information would you request in return? Use your imagination. Substantiate these rumors. Then perhaps with the truths that you bring back, we can paint a clearer picture of things that are happening. Maybe that will give you some, will happen. Mm-hmm. empower you to make some choices. I suppose being pushed around the board. Uh, sorry about, sorry about losing my temper. It's a uh, semi-blow. Oh. We are all seekers of the truth. Master Terrawin. I suppose it wouldn't hurt to spill the beans about the old prophet. I know a thing or two. Just so happens we happen to run into him a few months back. Well, wait a minute. Hmm? Wait a minute. Would that be enough to maybe interest you a bit more? While the Otherworldly concerns of prophets arisen from the wreckage of burning airships certainly is intriguing, and will pay for a drink or two in a tavern. Admittedly, my concerns are not with the prophet. I will say this, though. I have no doubt that the story is real. Which one? Which one? You're talking about the metaphysical part of the What's the... the the Wimperuni uh, uh, airship thing that fell down and all that? Is that what you're saying? Well... That it physically happened or that what everyone claims happened afterwards? The ship fell upon the Gelman and Zox foundry. Yes. Who I also suspect those two to also be members of the Guiding Hand. Well, I can't... We have Lehman, Geldman... Zox. Rightly speaking, that I wouldn't, I wouldn't present for it. But I, I'm just saying, I clapped eyes on the old prophet there, and uh, oh man, he's he's got a way with his words, and just uh, set something to set a, a fire in a man's blood. Are you, you know? familiar with the story of the southern god who's called Dimish? Yeah. I think I heard words bandied around as such at some point. Yes. Some number of years ago, and this is at least, I mean, when I was young, I heard the story of this young man who was a sinner, a terrible person, committing terrible crimes. He was punished in thrones with River Karnak. And uh, he arose anew. He had been absolved of his sin. He had arisen a new person, and he led. He led a following, a great following, in fact. And the people worshipped him. The story of this prophet, of this accident that had borne him, at first I'd simply dismissed as something perhaps to intrigue small minds to attract people who are malleable in mind to a cult leader. But in this case with this fireborn prophet, I feel a certain that these are not mere stories. And you were certainly not the first people to admit to see him using for lack of a better term, sorcery. Yeah, I seen it. He, he light his sword on fire, just like that. You can tell. You can. You can tell him. Tell him true. No mere parlor trick, I'm sure. But more importantly, 
this prophet has a following, the 13. Yes. We've heard about this as far as far as we are here in Hastings. I mean, our people do go to drink when they trade. As I said before, when I spoke with a diplomat who brought people back with him, he told very convincing stories. This uh, diplomat, I later found out, was a man named Eustace Adelard. Oh, yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We you know got the that name. snake in the grass. The prophet has chosen him to be his mouthpiece. <clears throat> I mean, he has nefarious things in mind. Mm-hmm. As I understand it, the 13 stand up for the rights of workers, for the lowborn who are, in a sense, enslaved to the middle class. It is not the blue bloods that run to Rindle, it is the burgeoning middle class. They have pushed out, they have pushed out the lowborn. It is not surprising to find that uh, immigrants and those who do not have names, do not carry surnames, uh, would be so angered at the growth of middle class men rising. Hmm. They have no names, they have no title, they have no lands. They're also preaching revolt against the king. Correct. Because they think the king has been the one to work them to the bone for this particular wall. Every angry person at some point or another points their finger at God or the king or whoever, but I feel that their ire is very directional. Hmm. That could be helpful. The prophet has gathered a great number of people at his side who not only believe in him, but they believe his words, despite the fact he may conjure fire from a sword. Yeah, a wooden one, too. It doesn't... It didn't... It didn't, you know, to be honest, burn as up. Interesting as that is, him leading hundreds or perhaps however many people is more important. One flaming sword can kill one person at a time. A mob? Yeah. Precisely. I didn't mean to diminish the miracle of which he has wielded. But it is an instrument in a greater power he has, which is the ability to influence others. <laughs> and to make them believe. Yes. He never once hit anyone with that sword that we saw, but we saw a mob take out hundreds. I've seen generals do something similar. Mm. Well, <clears throat> these true. stories are true, and I'm certain they are. Hey, above, above board? Yes. Did they actually kill any of the Salt Petermen? They killed a lot of the Salt Petermen. Yeah. Do they, they killed well, them. maybe not the Salt Petermen, but they killed the people in the compound. That's right. Kill people to come out, but not necessarily the salt here. We don't know. We know sure their, their, their workers got killed. We know that. Well, you know, there was one wizard there, at least, but I think he ran. Uh, I think it, it's possible that we killed more the salt than the 13th. Didn't kill any. I did. Yeah, didn't kill any. Yeah. Well, wait. You mean, you mean after? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, after. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Kill <That's>, three. <laughs> I know <laughs> that there, there is a <laughs> complex we relationship did. between Durendal between the bear and the baroness. That much is true. Hmm. That has been bubbling up for some time, uh, but not with swords and salt, so to speak. Now it is coming true. There's a reason why the baroness is uh, showing her hand. I do not believe the baroness to be an evil woman. I just think she enjoys power. Yes. What? Well. Is she the best for the girdle? Who knows? But something to consider. He smiles. Obviously your people don't think so. Who? Your people. The people of Hastings. The people of Hastings' concerns are petty. Very petty. Their needs are taken care of regardless. Do you think that they are of a political mind? No. They simply dislike the Baroness upon the principle itself that she is born blue blood and they were born low. Then you. What do you think? That's for another conversation. Mm. <laughs> Isn't that anything? Well. As an Allurenite, we are uh, agnostic. 
we are the only thing that we serve is the truth. Hmm. The light to the learner. No less. Should you be in Kaltarian, which I'm sure you will be, and should you be drawn to the courts, as I'm sure you shall be, perhaps you can use this information to your to your advantage. Can I tend? Oh yeah, well then. So we've had our conversation, but obviously we have things that we have to do to move forward with this boat. Of course. So where should we go to procure purchase? Where Speak to the people. They will adore you after what happened last evening. Well, no it spread that, that quickly. Hastings was much smaller than what it appears. It, it appeared pretty small. Maybe we can get our refund from the end, though. Oh, credit. I mean, we're going to be staying here another night. That's true. Yeah. There are there are there are several there are a few funny stories I suppose about Hastings. Some call it Hastings because it's very quick to pass through. Some call it Hastings because word spreads very quickly. Some call it Hastings because in the summer the Hastings arise. Uh, but one thing is true out of those. All th- all three things are true in those stories. One can pass through the city in the blink of an eye. But word spreads incredibly quickly between the folk. And uh, if you have allergies. I recommend Dwayne to treat the, uh, the congestion. That I know. <laughs> <laughs> but Good one. he kind of stands from his desk and <laughs> I will be around. However, I am remiss to say that we shall not have another meeting like this until after you return to Kelterian. So once we are beyond these doors, it will be all smiles and talk of goodness, and thank you for coming to Hastings. So if there's anything else that you wish to ask, is there you should candle? pose that question now. Is there a candle or a fireplace or anything in his... There's chambers? several candles, yeah. That are burning right now? Mm-hmm. She goes over and burns the letter. Okay. I assume that uh, that's the last that anyone else will hear in that. Mm-hmm. No one else under my employ knows what was in that letter. I alone... Tend to the aviary. I would not trust these itinerant priests with such information. What about your brother in arms? Rasputin Hexenstern. Doesn't he serve the learner? He does. I am curious. You say that you serve truth. He is a magier of the of the learner. What's that mean? He is the, one of the highest ranking priests of our order. Yeah. So. There are Eloranites. So he is there are, not agnostic in his political views. Not at all. <clears throat> Maybe. I suppose that we all look to those who follow the learner and expect, suspect the most sinister of machinations. No, 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 no. He's definitely not. You said you, as you said, you are agnostic when it comes to politics. Correct. He is not. Correct. Mm. Well, what is between him and Eloran? Ah. So you have no words about the man. Master Haxenstern is very learned. He is one of the most esteemed priests of our order. There are truth sayers, there are Loranites, and there are Magiers, and he is a Magier. He's the highest of our order. I suspect you were in the middle tier then, yes? Does it really matter? No. This is scary. <laughs> <laughs> hey, there, there's no shame in it. I'm, I'm not saying it's a moral failing and you don't it's, outrank him. Come on. It's not a judgment against your character, nor your uh, dedication. It's just a question to understand your ranks. No. Magier. There's a ancient old word that means magi or magician. Wizard. You finally found your wizard, boys. 
No, no. You've been speaking about wizards. Okay, there's a difference between a magician and a warlock and a wizard. And I was wrong and I called it a warlock when it should have been a magician. They're all the same. But, but wizards, they will, have wands. I will say this about Master Rasputin. He is an outsider, yes. He is from Gothorn. Without a doubt, his name, of course, betrays that. Uh, he is very learned. He spent many years in Cahabro, and he understands the intrigues of the court. He serves, he saved the, the Baroness's life. Yes. Mm-hmm. On Penumbra three years ago. He has earned, he has earned his title. He has earned that right. He has done what many of us cannot do, which is to predict the future. Uh. Well, I don't know how much more we could be of service to each other right at this moment, but I do know that we have things to do. Farewell, then. Once the store closes, it is as we were before. He <clears throat> clears his throat and straightens his monk's robes. Clasps his hands together and smiles broadly. Elisa grinds the ashes into like the floor. Oh, I certainly trust that we shall have words again before you leave, if not only for us to see you away to the west. He yes. corrects his accent. Cool. Yes. A farewell party it is. Yeah, it sounds wonderful. Very well. Bring the mead. He <laughs> smiles and you walk out the threshold in front of him, and we will end tonight's session. Whatever well, reward points, everybody. That's right. And I think we only had we only had a little bit of corruption tonight. So Still mistaken. need to roll. That's right. Corruption roll for tonight is five. Oh, fate point. You got a fate point? Yeah, I was at nine. Oh, that's nine. right. You're oh, at nine. <laughs> I was like, it's gonna be a one. <laughs> Just kidding, it was a one. I'm just kidding. Oh, yay! Where are we at? Yay, either way, right? Yeah, yay, either way. Two, three, right. four, five, six. So. Eight, the terms where my character is going. Yeah, so I could do two if I wanted to. I'm just saying. So we will continue seven, seven, then seven. next week with Queen of Embers. Um, how far are you guys into second, into intermediate tier now? I have eight. Eight to 20 purchases. No, no, sorry. I, I, we've. Uh, four. So four. Four out of yeah, yeah. four remaining. No, no. no four out of purchases. Oh, I see. Four out of yeah, twenty. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Makes sense. Okay. Well, you'll take that rank in warfare. <laughs> yeah. Ooh, I got four points. You got four points. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So we'll continue next week, Queen of Embers. Thank you all for listening. Thank you to our patrons for uh, your patronage. Thanks, thanks for yeah, all thanks. the for supplying us with rations. Thanks. Thank you. Pop food. Thanks, guys. We appreciate it. See you next week. Bye. Bye, Bye guys. There you go. <laughs>